Mark and I are still at Carkeek Park, upper level, in Seattle, Washington. In case we haven't said so, behind us is a little shelter and some woods. Then behind us is, further back is Puget Sound. So we're still at Carkeek Park. There's a time for three more replacement rules. And that is, these three will be the last of the replacement rules. First rule is very short and simple. Tautology says that you can take a formula P wedge P and replace it with the corresponding formula P or vice versa. P can be replaced with P wedge P anywhere in a proof. Similarly, the formula P ampersand P is interchangeable with the formula P anywhere in a proof. So we can take an A and turn it into A wedge A. We can take a, an E and turn it into E ampersand E and so forth. Next rule is uh, exportation. The exportation rule No, well, it's okay, we'll just keep going. It's a little minor slip up. Exportation rule says that if I have a statement P ampersand Q horseshoe R, that that's interchangeable with, I can replace it with, and it can replace the corresponding P horseshoe Q horseshoe R. Notice with exportation, I have a conjunction horseshoe a statement, and I replace it with I turn the, the ampersand to a horseshoe and shift the parentheses over. Uh, think of it this way. Suppose an insurance company said, if within a year you get a ticket and have an accident, then they will revoke your insurance. Isn't that equivalent to saying that if within a year you have a ticket, then it follows that if you have an accident, then they'll revoke your insurance. They're equivalent, if you think about it. And the last of our replacement rules is the uh, rule known as equivalence. The equivalence rule says that if I have a P triple bar Q formula, that that is replaceable with, and it may replace, the corresponding P ampersand Q wedge not P ampersand not Q. This, any formula that's P triple bar Q will be equivalent to the corresponding formula P and Q or not P and not Q. And similarly, a P triple bar Q statement is also interchangeable with the corresponding P horseshoe Q ampersand Q horseshoe P statement as well. So the equivalence rule allows, us, allows these to all be interchanged from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and so forth. That's the last of our rules. Now, uh, Mark, do you want to be a student one more time? And we'll do a proof with, with a couple of these rules. Bring it on. OK. So let's see. How about if I have A and B, horseshoe G. All right. All right. And then let's have um, let's get a Z in there. Okay. Okay. And then let's uh, let's have an a statement. And let's then derive x. How's that? OK. Well, I'm looking for some patterns here. Yeah, so let's, let's see here. Well, I might be tempted to do exportation on this, but I would not, because the parentheses really aren't in the right spot. Mm -hmm. Doesn't like, fit exportation. Doesn't quite fit it. Uh, neither does this. Again, the parentheses aren't in the right spot. If the parentheses were here, I could. If they were here, I could. I can do exportation on this. Maybe I'm not seeing where that's going to take me. I think I'll go ahead and do it. I'll go ahead and do exportation on one. Okay. And I can write it again. Okay, so the way the exportation is going to work is we'll get A 
and then horseshoe V, horseshoe G. Good. Exportation from one. You want to explain what I did there? Okay. So exportation says if you have P ampersand Q horseshoe R, that's logically equivalent to and may be replaced by the corresponding P horseshoe and then parenthesis Q horseshoe R. Right. So he went from here to here using the export rule. That's good. Now, frankly, I wouldn't have seen what I'm about to see just in my head. I, I saw the exportation move. I went ahead and did it, writing it down. Once it's written down, I'm seeing bug kind of connects here, B-U-G, mm -hmm. B-Horseshoe G. Mm -hmm. And that's making me think of hypothetical syllogism. So I'd encourage students to go ahead and do the rules, write the thing down. Oftentimes, once you write it down, you'll see stuff, just like I'm seeing that I can now do a hypothetical syllogism giving me A horseshoe Z. That would be from lines two and four. So I've got these two horseshoes. These guys match up at kitty corner, so the A drops down, the Z kind of drops down, so to speak. Very good. Give me something to work with. Good, so P horseshoe Q, Q horseshoe R, P horseshoe R comes down. Yeah, yeah and you're right that, that sometimes if you're looking at a proof and you're stuck, when you start bringing stuff down and writing it down on paper, you see things you didn't see, and it helps you. So sometimes students will tell me, uh, they'll stare at a proof, and I'll say, well, why don't you try this? And they'll say, well, I thought of that, but I didn't write it down because I didn't know what good it would do me. And what Mark is saying is very good advice. Write it down anyway, even if you're not sure what you'll do with it. Bring as much down as you can, because when you bring things down, you see things you didn't see. Yeah. Yep. And it's happening again. I see the AUZ. Again, my eyes just kind of match it up with that AUZ. Another little tip we might look at, and this doesn't work all the time, I've used lines one, two, and four, and I can use them again. I have not used lines three and five. If I was stuck, one of the things I might do is take a look at the lines I haven't used yet. Sometimes they end up having a, a ways of working together. It just happens to work this time. It's maybe by chance. But I see I can do a modus ponens because if the P is true, then here the Q would be true. I've got the P, so I'm going to go ahead and do the modus ponens because I never turn down a chance to do modus ponens. You like that rule? Well, it's a good workhorse rule. It always seems to do something good. And that's going to be three, five modus ponens. Okay. Getting closer to the conclusion. Okay. P, P horseshoe Q, even for the Q. Very good. Yeah. Now that isn't the conclusion, but if it's false and it's false at X, surely by double negation I can say X. So now, now I'm home free. Denag. De 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 <laughs> <laughs> Seven. And there's uh, my you mean, conclusion. You mean six. Six, even better. Yeah. Ooh, there we go. Six. Yeah, nice. because DNEG says you can turn tilde tilde P into P, or vice versa. And that's very good. And again, this was not rehearsed. Mark didn't know that this proof was coming. Neither did I. Mm. I made it up. Uh, he did this completely cold. Brilliant performance. Amazing, I would say. Yes. Thank you. Okay.